Understanding decimal places in experimental work is very important because they allow us to consider measurement limitations when we go on to process our experimental data. For IB chemistry, we need to be able to firstly count decimal places in a number and secondly consider decimal places when adding or subtracting measurement values. Let's first briefly look at how we count decimal places. So to count decimal places in a value we simply have to count the number of figures after a decimal point in that value. So let's have a look at a few examples. So in this first number, 1230, there's actually no decimal point, therefore there can't be any decimal places. We say it has zero decimal places. In this second example, I can see that there are three numbers after the decimal point. Therefore, we say it has three decimal places. In this third example, I can see after the decimal point there is one figure, even though it's a zero, it still counts. So again, in this case, there's a, only going to be one decimal place. In the fourth example, I can see that after the decimal point, there are six figures. Therefore, we say this number has six decimal places. For the fifth and final example, you'll see we've got a number written in scientific notation. So before counting the number of figures after the decimal point, we need to write this number out fully like this. And now we can see that after the decimal point, when it is fully expressed, there is, there is only one figure. So this value has one decimal point. Let's now have a look at how we deal with decimal places when adding or subtracting measurement values. There are two simple steps we need to follow when adding or subtracting measurement values. The first one is to identify the number of decimal places in the measurement values involved. Once we've done that, we need to apply the smallest number of decimal places in those values to the calculated value or the answer to our calculation. And the reason we do this is because it allows us to take into account the precision of our measurements when processing our data. Let's have a look at some simple examples. So for this first example, an addition calculation, if I stick those numbers in my calculator, or do it in my head if I can, I get an answer of 20.63. However, because it is an addition calculation, I need to look at the number of decimal places in each value, in which case the first value has two decimal places, and the second value has just one decimal place. And I now need to take the smaller of those two numbers, which is one, and apply that decimal place to my answer. So 20.63 to one decimal place is going to be 20.6 grams. In this second example, we have a subtraction calculation. So again, we need to consider the decimal places in those measurement values. In this case, the first value has just one decimal place, and the second value actually has three decimal places. The smallest number of decimal places there is one, so I need to give my final answer to one decimal place as well. Again, in this final example, I'm doing, well, addition and subtraction. In either case, I need to consider the number of decimal places. And actually, in this case, in each value, you can see there are two decimal places, which makes life easy for us, meaning that my final answer should also have two decimal places. So as a very quick recap, when I'm doing addition or subtraction calculations, I need to consider the number of decimal places in the values I'm using and apply the smallest number of decimal places I can find to my calculated value. Hopefully this video has been of some help.